apparently the wrap-up of blue books because the first six or seven books that I'm talking about are all blue, so that's interesting. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my April wrap-up for 2020. On the day that I'm filming this, April 24th, I have read a total of 26 books. I still have six more days of the month and I've been reading like crazy obviously since I have 26 books to talk about. So if I end up reading more I'll just make like another wrap-up video. But I'm splitting this one up into three parts just because there are 26 books and that's a lot. So Without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I read is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. This book follows 17-year-old Cassie who is recruited into the FBI program called The Naturals. Cassie is a natural profiler, which basically means that she has the ability to look at somebody and determine what they're going to do next. The program consists of four other teenagers with other natural abilities, and they are recruited by the FBI to help on cold cases. I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this book and how underrated it was. Definitely agree with that statement. I am so glad that I finally picked it up because it's probably one of my new favorite books. Right from the very first chapter, I was instantly pulled into the story. I didn't want to put it down. I wanted to keep reading. It was very fast-paced, and you needed to keep reading to figure out what was going to happen next. Although I was able to call the killer pretty early on in the story, it didn't hinder my enjoyment of the story, and there was a little twist in there that I didn't see coming, which I really liked. The book is definitely full of YA cliches and tropes, but it was actually a good time, honestly. It kind of felt like the author was poking fun at how many she threw in there. That could be totally wrong. It could just be a coincidence, but it kind of felt like it was a joke, but who knows if that's true. There was also a love triangle in this book, which I'm usually not a fan of, and I wouldn't say that I was a fan of this, but it was put on the back burner that it wasn't a huge focus, so it didn't really bug me that much. I love every single one of the characters in this book. They all bring something unique to it, and I'm definitely excited to see where the story goes next, even though I don't own the rest of the series, so I need to find it somehow. Next book was another 5 out of 5 star read for me. It is The Queen Rising by Rebecca Roth. I'm thinking about doing a full review of this so I'm not going to give a lot of thoughts but this basically follows Brianna who has been alone for most of her life. She doesn't know the identity of her father other than that he is dangerous. At the age of 10 her grandfather sends her to Magnolia House in order to keep her hidden away. At Magnolia House she is trained in one of the five passions, music, art, wit, knowledge, or dramatics and she never really feels like she belongs in any of them. She finally settles on the passion of knowledge in her final three years of study and and it is taught under a man named Cartier. The entire goal of the Magnolia House is to eventually be chosen by a patron, and when Brianna's time to be chosen comes and goes, she is very upset. When a mysterious patron with his eyes set on revenge arrives one day, Brianna is whisked away and she needs to decide who she is loyal to. I didn't have any expectations going into this, so to say I was pleasantly surprised is probably an understatement. I absolutely loved the whole idea of Magnolia House. It was so intriguing to me. I really love the cast of characters. Brianna was great, super feisty. My favorite character was probably Cartier. I had a bit of problems with him in the beginning. If you've read this book, you know what I'm talking about, but by the end he definitely grew on me. I also think that the world building in this was incredible. I definitely did not expect the amount of political intrigue there was, but I actually really enjoyed it. So if you guys want to hear like my full thoughts on this book, definitely let me know down below and I'll do a full review. The next book that I read was A Woman on the Edge by Samantha Bailey. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Morgan Kincaid who is waiting for the train one day when a mysterious woman comes up to her, hands her her baby, and then jumps in front of the train to her death. She is taken into police custody where she is questioned and that's when she finds out that the woman is named Nicole Markham who is the CEO of a very successful clothing company called Breathe. There are no witnesses to corroborate Morgan's story and therefore she is a suspect for Nicole's murder so she needs to take it into her own hands to try to find a connection between herself and Nicole. The book is full of a lot of twists and I was able to tell by the end what was happening and who was behind what was going on, but it was still a really fun adventure to get to that point. One of those stories where you have to keep reading to figure out what was going to happen next because it seems a little bit wild. I like how the story is told in two different points of views. 
they're both Nicole, but one is in the past and one is in the present. It was really interesting to see Nicole spiral into her paranoia. It was definitely a wild ride trying to figure out how Nicole and Morgan were connected. I wasn't actually able to figure it out until it was revealed, which was nice because that rarely happens to me in thriller books. The one thing I will say is that the ending was pretty rushed. Like, it was a pretty slow build up to that point, and then all of a sudden all these things were happening, and it just didn't flow as nicely, but it was still a pretty enjoyable read, so good times. The next book is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows a small town called Four Paths who have four founding families. These four families are more respected than the other families that live in this town because their ancestors sacrificed themselves in order to hold the beast that is in the forest at bay. Each family bloodline possesses some sort of power that holds the beast at bay, but they are only able to access this power if they complete a ritual at the age of 16. Violet Saunders was part of one of these families. After moving away years ago, her mother decides to move back into Four Paths in order to be closer to her sister. Upon arriving, Violet meets the children of the other three families, and she needs to decide who she can trust in order to save the town once again. I knew I was going to like this book right from when the synopsis was released, and I was not wrong. I was pulled into the story right from the first chapter and totally immersed in this spooky, creepy town's atmosphere. The town and the backstory was just so intriguing to me. I wanted to keep reading to figure out more about how the town came to be and what this beast was. I became totally invested in every single one of these teens and their backstories and I just wanted to know more about each and every one of them. I really liked Violet. I think that her backstory was probably the most interesting just because she had no idea about her bloodline and what that meant for her. I was a fan of Harper. I think that she was a total badass except she kind of annoyed me about how angry she was all the time, which like it was granted and understandable, but at times it was just like girl chill. I really liked how she lost part of her arm during her trial, but she didn't let that define who she was. She still fought for what she wanted. Isaac was by far my favorite. I think that he is a little misunderstood baby and I just want to protect him at all costs. Justin was definitely my least favorite of the group, but he did end up growing on me at the end. I listened to this on audiobook, so I was able to distinguish the characters from one another. I know a lot of people have complained about them kind of blending together, but I found it very obvious who was talking and whose perspective we were getting. I was also a big fan of the side characters. One that really stood out to me was Augusta. I think that it was very interesting to see her backstory and why she behaved the way that she did. I'm definitely excited to see where the story progresses with this one. I am fully invested in these characters and their story. The next book that I read was An Unwanted Guest by Sherry LaPena. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows nine different people who all book a weekend trip to a family-owned inn in the mountains. Upon arriving, they discover that there is going to be a snowstorm, which is going to have them snowed in. Then the power cuts, bodies start piling up, secrets start being revealed, and they have to decide who they can trust and who they can't. This gave me total clue vibes, which was a lot of fun. The one thing that I will complain about is that there were 11 characters and we got perspectives from all of them, so it was a little bit hard to keep track of who was who and where everything fell into place. It did become a lot more clear as the story progressed, but that's probably like my biggest complaint. I'm a big fan of whodunit mysteries, so it was a lot of fun trying to piece little things together to figure out who the killer was. I wasn't able to figure it out, which was a lot of fun for me. I was able to call one of the twists at the end, which like was really obvious in my opinion, which kind of sucked. I will also say that the ending was kind of way too fast paced for the rest of the story. It didn't really make sense, but overall a very speedy read. It was fun, 3.5 out of 5. The next book I read was The Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows a girl named Rin who after the death of her best friend Lottie has kind of been on the standstill. She hasn't been able to move past this tragic event in her life. On the one year anniversary of Lottie's death, Rin finds herself stranded in the airport due to a snowstorm where she meets a boy who might just help her move on. The book was both heart-wrenching and heartwarming at the same time. I really liked how it was told in a span of 24 hours. I did really like the flashbacks before the accident to show the friendship between Ren and Lottie. It was very interesting to see their dynamic. I will say that I think it was a very unbalanced friendship. It just seemed that Rin relied solely on Lottie for her happiness, which kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but 
that might just be me. I really liked watching Rin come out of her grief as she went on this adventure with Xander and the rest of the cast of characters she met in the airport. I definitely liked Xander more as a main character than Rin. I didn't really feel like I was able to connect to Rin. That, that honestly might be because I've never gone through what she was going through. I've never really lost anybody super close to me, so I couldn't really relate. I liked the balance between the sad and the happy moments in this. I definitely th I think that the side characters were probably my favorite part of the story. They're very quirky and fun, so I just really enjoyed reading about them. But yeah, overall, it was a very heartwarming but heart-wrenching book at the same time. The next book I'm not going to say too much about because I really was not a fan of it. It is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. This book follows Penny Lee, who is attending college for the first time. Upon arriving, she meets her roommate's Uncle Sam, and they start a relationship, friendship over text, and it's like the story of that. I was just not a big fan of Penny. She really rubbed me the wrong way. She was super annoying. She was just mean and rude for like no reason, especially to her mom, which I cannot relate because me and my mom are like best friends, and the fact that she was just so rude and mean to her for absolutely no reason. Like, her mom was just trying to be her friend and would, like, do anything for her and she would just blow her off. It drove me crazy. I could go on a whole rant about that, but we're not going to. I also just kind of hated the relationship. The amount of times that Penny spent just talking about how hot Sam was, like, there was literally a whole page about how hot and sexy his armpit was, and I just- it was weird. The only reason I did keep reading was Sam. He was a huge sweetheart and he definitely cared about those around him. I honestly just kept reading because I wanted to know where his story ended up. But overall, I just did not feel any chemistry between Penny or Sam. Didn't care about the relationship, didn't care about the drama that they caused for each other, and I just was not a fan of this book, so two out of five. And then the final book that I'm going to be talking about in part one of this wrap-up is A Little Something Different by Sandy Hall. I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book is told from 14 different perspectives. It follows Gabe and Leah, who everyone thinks should be together. Everybody realizes this except for them, and it's basically everybody around them kind of trying to push them together. Like I said, this book is told from 14 perspectives, which was a really cool way to tell the story. There's even a perspective from a squirrel, which was definitely my favorite part of the story. He was just so cute and fluffy and just adorable. A lot of people have complained about the way the story is told. I listened to it on audiobook, so each character had a different voice, so it didn't really bother me as much because it was very easy to differentiate voices and who was who and all that jazz. This is definitely made for a much younger audience, but I liked it because I didn't really have to put any thought or effort into this story while reading. It was very lighthearted and fluffy to read. I did like how everybody was trying to push the two main characters together, although I found the two main characters very annoying because it was so obvious that they liked each other and clearly everybody else could see it, but they were too shy to even like talk to each other. Like this book is told in the span of a year and I think it was like eight months into that year when they actually started talking to each other. I also found Leah to be extremely annoying. The fact that she got mad at Gabe for not telling her about his disability when they literally do not talk to each other, like they aren't friends. Something like a disability is very personal to a person, so the fact that they literally have no relationship whatsoever and she's mad at him for not telling her pissed me off. Again, that could be a rant that could go on forever, but we're not going to do that. But anyways, overall, fun, fluffy, 3.5 out of 5. All right, everybody, so that was my part one wrap-up for April 2020. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!